Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's live stream. My name is Louie. I work for the Center for Advising Career and Student Success. And um, I want to start with a couple housekeeping announcements about uh, how to view this stream. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, there should be a box in the lower left-hand corner of your screen that says, be a part of the conversation. If you click that, you can join the live chat and we'll answer questions during the broadcast. If you have any problems with that, just leave a comment directly in the YouTube box and I'll be watching those throughout the broadcast and uh, answering any questions that come in. We know there's been a lot of questions from the call-in hours this morning and we've gotten a lot through emails and on Facebook, so feel free to jump in there and ask even if it's a little bit off topic. That being said, I am going to turn it over to our two presenters. Thanks, Zoe. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Meg Austin. I'm an academic advisor for the science majors on campus. Uh, includes biology, marine science, environmental science, technology and policy, and environmental studies. And I'm Carrie Bynum. I am the interim advisor, advisor for business while Esmeralda Maldonado is out for the summer. Um, and then I will be taking over computer science and communication design. So today we're going to be focusing on giving you a tour of your CMS Student Center, which you all should have access to by now. Uh, first, I'm going to share my screen with you. And if we go to the dashboard tab, you can access your CMS Student Center from your MyCSUMB dashboard. So that's csumb.edu forward slash dashboard. And from the blue bar at the top, there's a CMS link. You just click that CMS button there, and that takes you to your Student Center. So the, what is your CMS Student Center? It basically is a tool to manage many school-related functions, including registering for your classes, which is what we're going to mostly um, be focusing on throughout these live streams. Uh, it's a pretty important function that you use through CMS is registering for your classes. Uh, but there's also, you can view progress towards your degree through your CMS Student Center. Um, you can check your grades and um, a lot, lot more which we're going to cover a lot of those, to or several of how the, what topics you can cover in this CMS today, but we're mostly going to focus on um, viewing your transfer credit and also your academic requirements report. Okay. Um, so our student center looks a little bit different than what you all probably see. But um, you, like Meg said, you can use your student center to do a lot of different things with it, um, like pay your tuition, um, set your contact information, check your grades, um, see registration information. On our screen, you can see that Monty has an enrollment appointment, which is your registration time for April 21st. Um, you can also check your account holds, and they'd be up in your the top right corner under holds. Um, some holds that you might see are an MMR hold for measles, rump, uh, measles mumps, and rubella um, that you need for housing, so you need to verify your vaccinations, or also a Title IX hold. Um, and if you click on the actual holds, it pops up, or it takes you to another screen with some more information about what the hold means and how to clear it. So it's really important because some holds can affect registration that you always keep an eye on. Um, your goals. Um, it also has a to-do list. Uh, the to-do list um, is mostly for like admission stuff, admission right? Or financial aid. Um, it'll tell you if you need to submit transcripts or financial aid documents. If you click on your to-do list, it'll also open up and tell you. I'm not sure if Monty will open up. We probably shouldn't have clicked it. That's okay, we'll see what, the we'll see what it does. Is. Yeah, tell us okay. more about that. So it says that he needs to complete critical thinking. I'm not going to click on that, but he started it. Um, and some other information about what to do with it. Okay. Um, and, but you can also view your academic requirements report, which is um, a snapshot, the most accurate snapshot of where you're at as far as 
how close you are to graduation. Um, so let's open that up. You should check your academic requirements report at least once a semester, definitely around registration and after you've registered for classes, um, just to make sure that it's up to date and accurate. And if it's not, then you should reach out to your advisor. Um, so they can either help you correct it or direct you into the right place to get it corrected. Now once it comes up, should we review academic requirements or do you want to go over transfer credit first? Um, we should go over transfer credit and then we can go over academic requirements in a little more detail, but that's okay. You can keep it going so we can show them a brief overview. Yeah, see if it will ever come up. It always takes a couple minutes for the academic requirements report to load. It's okay. It's still thinking up there, but <laughs> it should be a little faster yeah, yeah. for you. <laughs> it might be a little faster for you. Uh, okay, so now that it's up, your academic requirements report will one display what major you are, and Monty is a psychology major, and also your catalog year. Your catalog year is important because it lets you know what set of requirements you're being held to. Mm -hmm. um, so if you ever forget, it's on here. And it will also say up at the top whether or not you've applied to graduate. So no incoming student should have applied to graduate yet because you just got here. You're not done. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also has a blur with some important information about stuff you should see on the requirements report and a key of um, items that you're going to see on here. So red boxes are things that you still need to complete. Uh, Yellow diamonds are things that are in progress, and green check marks are um, things that have been completed. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So we want to go over transfer credit first, and then we can go back to sure. requirements report. Sure. OK. Um, so your transfer credit report can be found here from this drop down menu. Um, so just to save time, I've already preloaded it. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, so, if all transfer students, you will have your transfer credit displayed on this page. Um, it looks like Monty has transferred in 88 units from Hartnell. Um, transfer students are only allowed to apply 70 units towards their overall 120 units that are required for graduation. So, eventually, he will have an adjustment here um, of 18. But as we scroll down, this transfer credit report will also list your test credit, which could be AP credit, IB scores, or CLEP scores. Um, so if you submitted those, they'll pop up here. And it'll also tell you what area they're counting in. Um, and then down below is the actual courses that you completed and which area that they are um, being applied to. Um, yeah, so that, so that it will, under the CSUMB course metal column, it's going to mention if it transfers, um, if it articulates smoothly, then it'll say exactly what class here at CSUMB it equals to. So this student took Spanish 3 at Hartnell and it transferred um, smoothly to fulfill Spanish 201 Intermediate Spanish here at CSUMB. Um, so, but there'll be other examples which are don't transfer as uh, smoothly, but still fulfill general ed requirements or maybe other uh, major requirements, which um, will give examples of how those can differ in your academic requirements report when we go to that report. Um, but, and then if another thing to mention, if a uh, course under the CSUV course uh, code, if it's if it's listed as a TRAN course 116, then it means it transferred in as a lower division course. Um, so that lower division courses mean they're numbered from 100 to 200 level. Uh, those are for freshman and sophomore uh, level classes. If it transferred in as a 300 or, or TRAN 316, then it transferred as an upper division course. So um, if you transferred in from a college other than a community college, then you may have transferred in upper division units as well. So it's just something to look out for. Mm -hmm. Hang on one second. Okay, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, the uh, live stream wasn't working when I started the broadcast. So what I'm going to do, or not the live stream, but the live chat wasn't working when I started the broadcast. So I'm going to put a link in the comments that you can click to use that. 
Um, it's not a big deal. If you have a question, you can always just ask it directly on the YouTube comment page, but I'll put a link to the live chat uh, in the comments on the YouTube stream, so then you guys can use it. That was all. Okay. I'm glad we're live. Yeah. So oh, no, yeah, we're definitely live. We're, we're going. <laughs> okay. So, so now yeah. we're on the academic requirements report, which we got to through that drop-down menu in the academic section of the student center. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're just going to go into what each of these sections are. So this is the key. So um, like I kind of mentioned before, you're going to see red boxes. If you're, if you're a freshman, um, transfer students will see more green check marks. Um, that's just because they have more stuff done, but that's okay. Um, red boxes just mean that you still need to complete the requirement. Green check marks means that the requirement has been completed. And yellow diamonds means that it's in progress. So, mm -hmm. um, and then moving down, the requirements report is made up of these sections. Um, see, it looks like Monty has a lot to get done still, but that's okay. Uh, but if we expand it all, It'll break down exactly what's in each of these sections. So um, the first is just general education requirements, um, your standard A through E stuff. Yeah. Um, so, like Carrie mentioned, this student in particular hasn't transferred, their transfer credit hasn't matched up to their academic requirements report yet, but most of uh, the transfer students watching this live stream should be able to access your academic requirements report here, and it should act, uh, be reflecting your uh, general ed classes that you've transferred in. Um, so if we go, for example, if let, let's scroll up a little bit and go to one of the general ed titles. Um, so you should be seeing most of these as green check marks are fulfilled. Um, if you're a transfer student, if you're a freshman, then you're just starting out, you won't have these general ed's fulfilled yet, which is totally okay. You're going to have plenty of time to do them. Um, so, but if you, um, if a requirement is shown as unfulfilled, so with a red box next to it, it'll list all the different classes you can take at CSUMB that do fulfill that general ed requirement or that requirement in general. Um, there are more than just G GEs on this page, which we'll go into a little bit more later. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's important to mention too that although there's a long list of classes that you can take to fulfill this particular general ed requirement, doesn't mean that all these classes are offered every single semester. Um, so it's good to check in uh, with your advisor if you have questions about when you can take these classes. Um, also, you can check to see you know up to date lists of when classes are offered through the class schedule, which we've talked about it in previous live streams, which that that tells you what classes are being offered every semester, every in any given semester. Okay. Can we take some questions? Sure, sure. So, um, just a reminder, if you want to ask any questions, you can leave a comment directly on our YouTube page, and you can also uh, join our live chat. I put a link in the description of the YouTube video, and it's also, I think, the top comment right now is the, the link, so either or. Um, let's start off, uh, Chrissy's in the chat, and she wants to clarify, uh, what do you mean by A through E requirements? Um, so your A through E requirements are the general ed requirements. Um, at community college, most community, or all community colleges have a CSUGE breadth that you probably followed as a transfer student. Um, it's just the different areas of courses that you're going to need to complete in order to um, obtain your degree. And there, you some of them might overlap with your major requirements, but some, most of the time, most of them are going to be separate. So yeah, you'll be able to find, so it'll list, if you go to the very top of the academic requirements report, it'll start, start with every GE that you're required to complete. Um, so the A area GEs are the oral and written communication GEs, the B areas are the sciences, sciences and math, and the Cs are the arts and the humanities and the languages. The D's are the social science GEs mm -hmm. and history, and history, and then uh, E area is health and well-being. So these are all, you know, all areas that every student needs to cover before they graduate with the CSU degree, you know, regardless of what your major is. Mm -hmm. Great. And then um, Victoria on the YouTube comments is saying, I'm not sure if this has been answered, but when will the transfer credit report be finalized or completely updated? 
Um, so as we, sorry, one of our coworkers just no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that dance <laughs> Um, as your so your spring semester grades from community college, um, you're probably either wrapping it up there or just finished it. So your final grades haven't been posted, and so we don't have your final transcripts. That transcript could take um, a couple months to get to get to us and get processed. Um, but I think students now should be able to start being able to see the academic requirements report, but just those last semester of classes might not be able, you might not be able to see just yet. So if you don't have access to your transfer credit report, you could definitely, um, it may, yeah, maybe do for a number of reasons. You may have just requested to turn your transcripts in late or um, they're not processed yet by admissions, but you can always reach out to admissions if your transfer credit is, if, is it posted when you think it should be. And then one last one from Janae in the live chat. Um, could you show one more time real quick how you get to academic requirements page? Sure. So I'll share my screen. Okay, so from the Student Center, you go to the drop down menu in your academics tab and you click Academic Requirements Report, those two arrows, and then it'll take 20 minutes to load. <laughs> 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 it'll take not that long. Yeah, it should, <laughs> sure take, you. it should take quicker for Which you. Which is funny because Monty Ray has nothing done. So I know, I know. It's, we're in a test instance, so we could no, protect people's quick. privacy. <laughs> yeah. OK, and then you'll get to it. Um. So, other questions, Louie? Uh, nope, not right now. Keep going if there's more you want to cover. So, as I've mentioned before, um, most transfers should have a lot of their GEs done already, um, but it is not uncommon for students to have one or two general eds still to complete once you start here at CSUMB. Just how CSUMB's general eds are structured, um, it's not uncommon for that to happen. So, you may be seeing one or two red boxes in the GEs areas up here. And that's not, that's not uncommon. You can always um, ask your advisor if for clarification on that if you think that you have to build that GE. And we have two GEs that are upper division, so you wouldn't have been able to satisfy them right. at community college anyway. And that's our A4, um, the graduation writing uh, assessment requirement, mm -hmm. and the D4, upper division service writing requirement. So off the bat, you're going to have those at least those two boxes read. Yes. And then... And then on addition to what the, additionally, the academic requirements report lists uh, university requirements. So it'll list the language requirements. So like we've mentioned in other live streams, um, all freshmen have to meet the language proficiency requirement by meeting that intermediate level of the language. Um, some transfers are exempt from this requirement, but some transfers still need to complete this requirement. Um, so that's one of the university requirements that's listed on the, on the academic requirements report, and as are um, the FYS requirement, that should be a little bit further down. Mm -hmm. um, that's there, so once freshmen complete that, that will be green. Uh, if you've transferred in more than 30 units, which most transfers should have, then that, will sh that should also be shown as green. Um, and uh, below that, It'll break down uh, the unit requirements uh, the, the every, that every student has to meet to graduate. So every student has to have, under the total earned unit requirement, has to earn 120 uh, units total minimum to graduate. And then under that, every student has to meet 40 units of upper division coursework, which that, those upper division courses are those 300 and 400 number courses. Um, there's a certain amount of units that every student has to complete in residence to graduate with a, a degree from CSUMB, and so on. So, it, so this this report does get very detailed and, and breaking down each requirement that you have to complete to graduate. So it's it, it gets very long. And again, if you have any questions about it, please reach out. But it's a great document to get to know because it it is a live document. It updates every semester with what requirements you personally have left to complete. And then below that, we would go start going into the your major requirements. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, also lists minimum GP minimums as well, mm -hmm. uh, GPA minimums that you have to 
uh, maintain. Um, so, but below that, it starts to list out all of your particular major requirements. Um, and again, transfer students may have transferred in classes that count towards your major, not just GEs, but maybe you think that you took classes to count towards your major. Um, and some of those classes won't automatically show up in this report as being fulfilled. So let's say it's a, a transfer student took introduction, an equivalent course to an introduction to psychology class at their, at their previous college. And if it's still not showing up here, that's okay. It doesn't mean that you didn't do it. It just may not have automatically um, articulated in your requirements report. So that's stuff that you can always bring up with your advisor to get clarification on. Um, if you have declared a minor below all these major requirements, we'll list all your minor requirements as well. Um, so everything's on there, including concentration, major, minor requirements. It's all listed there too. Can I jump in? Yes. A couple more questions here. Janae in the live chat is asking, as a freshman, how do you know what classes to take besides your general ed? It's almost like a trick question. <laughs> uh, well, you would look at your catalog, um, depending on what major you are. Um, let me show you, let me share my screen again so I can show you how to get to the catalog. And also, um, all the advisors are sending out emails to their new students to let them know with some suggestions of courses to take in their first semester, so look out for that as well. But let me show you how to get to the, um, the catalog. Also, while you're doing that uh, for Janae, I want to mention that um, we have a really supportive community on Facebook right now. There's a group called CSUMB Class of 2020. Students are answering questions there, and they're really being proactive in helping each other out as far as what classes to take. We have uh, almost 350 members in it, so that's a really good resource if you're not on there already. All right, Janae. So from the main screen of the CSUMB's website, which is csumb.edu, I scroll all the way down to the, these quick links here and I click catalog. And then I go to academic programs, undergraduate programs, and then you would select your major from here. So I'm gonna go with business because that's the one I know. And then you can look at required courses, which will li list um, all of the courses that you're gonna take to reach your degree at, at CS2MB. Um, and you can also look at a course pathway, which just gives you an example of um, timing of courses and how one student might do it. And you can select either the general freshman or the transfer pathway. If you're a freshman, then yeah, you can check, check out your transfer freshman pathway in your particular major, uh, depending what your major is, for other first semester, to, you know, general suggestions for your first semester at CSUMB. But you may be in a maybe in a major that the first semester classes that you take are nothing but GEs. Um, it, 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 so definitely, yeah, take a look at your catalog and then uh, keep an eye out for your um, from your guidance from your from your advisor uh, in your personal email or your CSUB email once you have access to that. And I did uh, verify this morning that they are starting to generate CSUB emails. It doesn't happen all at once, so there are some students that have it, and there's other students that are still in queue. But within the next couple of days, I expect everyone's going to have a, a CSUMB email. Cool, great. And that is the official form of CSUMB communication is yes. your email. So it's very good to keep an eye on your emails and check them regularly. Yeah. We can't email like cute girl eight three one at <laughs> Hotmail. <laughs> so you gotta make it professional. Yeah. Any other questions, Louis? Yeah, um, I know we've gone over this before, but it's worth re-mentioning. How many units slash classes should we add to our carts? Good question. So we, for your first semester, we recommend that you stick within the 12 to 15 or 16 unit range. So that's three to four classes uh, to actually enroll in for your first semester. But that doesn't mean you, can only, you, don't, you only have to add three or four classes to your shopping cart, because we always suggest that you add um, extra backup classes to your shopping cart, um, especially if you start adding some now and they um, 
potentially could fill up or, um, you know, things could change, I would just always suggest that you have backup courses in your shopping cart if your first chosen three or four priority ones, you know, if those don't work out for some reason, um, have some backups in there too. So you could have six or seven classes in your shopping cart, but, you know, only intend to roll in three or four of them. And uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to be doing live streams on how to put courses in your shopping cart. And we're going to basically repeat that same live stream with different people almost every day going forward. So uh, until the end of next week. So there'll be plenty of time for you to get educated on exactly how to do that and all the particulars. It's not really that hard. Let me check YouTube. I thought maybe there was one more. Uh, Noah on the YouTube page is asking, when are AP credits entered? I think AP credits get entered as they come in. So if you've sent them a while ago and you still don't see them, um, I would get a hold of admissions to make sure that they got them. Chrissy is also in the live chat reminding uh, students, check your emails from advisors. Don't forget to check your spam. And uh, starting soon, your CSUMB email will be live. And she also points out that once your CSUMB... This is our live stream. <laughs> she, such a she's, she's very helpful, let's put it that way. Your CSUMB email, uh, once it's live, we're not... Right now, we're emailing you at whatever email you put on your application to the university. But it's worth mentioning, once your CSUMB email is live, we're never going to contact you at that other email again. We're, we're only going to contact you at your official email. Okay. I'd like to say, uh, Chrissy is our coworker yes, and not, not a student. <laughs> and not not a student. A psychology advisor. <laughs> okay. Uh, question from Diane here. She has uh, 11 units in her shopping cart already. That's great. Uh, she needs a one or two unit class. She can't take more than 15 units. Um, I'm see, trying to, I'm reading ahead here. Hang on. I see any <laughs> Does that really mean anything? Okay, so one, it looks like, Diane, you didn't know where to find the academic requirements page. You might want to. Uh, rewind this or, or run the stream back a little bit because uh, that was a question that was just asked and we showed um, how to get to the academic requirements. She also says she sees that she has 84 transferable credits um, and she's asking does that really mean anything? It does. It's really important uh, because well of those 84, only 70 are going to count towards your overall units to, for graduation, which you need 120 units to graduate. But, and just to confuse everyone even more, um, all of those classes, as long as they were college level coursework, are going to count towards your degree requirements. But only 70 of the units are going to count towards your overall units. The 120 that I mentioned earlier to graduate, every student has to meet 120 units to, to graduate from CSUMB. Only 70 of those classes taken, 70 of those units taken at a community college will count towards that 120 count. So that is important. Yes. So, um, but eventually, um, as we get closer to the start of this, the school year, um, you'll see that that 84 units has been adjusted down to 70. Mm -hmm. So you'll on that uh, right below that 84 units, you'll see an adjustment of 14. Units. Okay, questions are coming in fast and furious now, but I want to remind people, uh, you can comment on the YouTube comments section, ask your questions there, we'll answer uh, all of them if we can during the live stream. Uh, you can also join the live chat and you can answer questions. And in case you don't know, the advantage of the live chat is you can upvote other people's questions if they're asking similar questions that you have. And also it archives the questions so you can go back after click on the question that was asked and then it'll skip to exactly the point in the video that we answered it. So it's a little bit more convenient. Okay, a couple more. Um, Kaylor in the YouTube comments is asking, as a transfer student, my language requirement shows only one required course and one needed. However, I didn't take any language classes at my junior college and I took two years in high school. Can I start in Spanish 102 or do I need to start at 101? Good question. Good question. <laughs> Do you want to oh, you can go ahead. Okay. I'll so, copy and paste it in our chat for you guys so you can see it. I know it's kind of a beefy question. 
so you're, you're right that you only need one class to fulfill the language proficiency requirement, but that one class is an intermediate level of a language other than English, so Spanish in your case. Um, you would need to reach intermediate level Spanish, which is Spanish 201 here. So you potentially could jump into Spanish 102. If I have Carrie navigate to the catalog again, I can show you where you can find um, the, Spanish, the online Spanish placement, where um, you can, we're actually sharing our screen here. Yeah. Where you can see if what level of Spanish that you're ready to jump into uh, once you start at CSUMB. So we're going to catalog, and then going to go to academic programs, and then undergraduate programs, and then click on the language proficiency link, and then under placement, the last link there, online Spanish placement exam. So any student has access to this, so you can just click on that link there. Enter in the password, otters1, and you will be able to take that 20 to 30 minute assessment, and it just goes to you, no one else, so it's only for your reference. Uh, so you, and it, it will let you know what, what level of Spanish that you're ready to start with, Spanish you know, semester one, semester two, or semester three, um, and then you can work with your advisor on helping you get into the correct Spanish level based on your current proficiency. Dovetailing off that, uh, Nikki is also asking about a similar thing with languages. She's saying Spanish courses show that permission is required. Can you explain what that means and how to get permission for the class? Sure. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Spanish, she it looks like she was looking at a Spanish course in uh, maybe her shopping cart, and it said permissions required. Can you explain what that means and how to get permission for the class? Right. So if you're trying to enroll in a you know a, a level of a Spanish class other than 101, so if you're trying to enroll in Spanish 102 or 201, you will need um, a permission number, which um, we are actually going to be sending an email to. Uh, oh, actually no. So you can contact. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. So to get, you can contact the Spanish department directly, or the World Language and Culture Department directly from this page that we're uh, that will uh, share with you. Um, and this is the language proficiency yeah. page that we went to to talk about the placement. Yeah. Um, so it's just down at the bottom, contact. Mm -hmm. And then whichever um, language course that you're talking about, you'd want to contact one of these that, Yeah, that particular faculty member. And um, what I was mentioning is that we're going to be emailing um, all the students about how to access and how, who to contact for particular permission numbers based on the subject of the course that you want to add as well. Um, and also there is a like general permission number box in classes, and that doesn't necessarily always mean that you need a permission number for the course, right? And the, oh, like permission required. Mm -hmm. So It'll yeah, say if permission is required. Right. Okay. So yeah. So if it's yeah, if it says permission required underneath the class in the class schedule, if that's maybe what you're referring to, um, then uh, yeah, it may not necessarily be a permission number, but it, a lot of times it's it's department uh, consent or instructor consent. Um, but if that's if, if that's what you're seeing underneath the, the schedule, if you see a class that says permission required, then most likely it will require a permission number. Um, but you can click on the class to read more about uh, what kind of um, permission you'll need to get into that particular class. And just to reiterate something Meg said earlier to all the students watching, um, there's a lot of classes that may or may not need permission codes. and mm -hmm every class has sometimes a separate person that you need to contact. So to make it easy, we're going to email all the new students with a website that we created that basically has a master list of every possible subject and who you need to contact to get permission codes for that. Okay, um, let's keep going here. Victoria's in the live chat and she says, what should I do if I can't get the 12 units? I'm a human development major and a lot of the classes needed for my major are not being offered. Should I look into getting a minor so I can be a full-time student? Well, 
As we get closer to the um, drop for non-payment deadline for financial aid, some of the courses that are full now might open up, so you might be able to get to the 12 units that way. And also, as we get closer to registration for transfer and first-time freshmen, departments might open more sections for things, so you might be able to get to it that way as well. Any other suggestions? Yeah, and if, you haven't read, if you haven't already reached out to uh, your faculty or professional advisor for that major, um, I would suggest doing that as well to ask for suggestions on other classes that you can potentially use as backups if um, if you're chosen if your preferred classes don't get opened up in the time between now and the time the semester starts. More questions about language coming in. Um, Michael in the live chat is saying, is there going to be a Hmong class? I already know Hmong, but I'm not fluent enough in French to advance to French 201. No, I don't believe we're, off, we're going to be offering those classes particularly, but you potentially could, um, if you are a heritage speaker in Hmong, then you may, they, you may be able to um, take, if this class is offered, and I'm not sure if Hmong is one of the offered languages in the WLC 212, if you go um, above a little bit more, Carrie. Let me share my screen. Oh, okay. I don't Sorry, I never remember. We're not sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, under take a class. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Students with heritage proficiency in the following areas. So can take that WLC 212 class to fulfill the language re requirement. So if um, you see a language that you have a heritage speak or have. Um, heritage experience speaking, then you can take WLC 212 to fulfill the language requirement. But you can also contact the World Language and Culture Department as well um, for more advice, further advice about your particular language um, to fulfill the language requirement. Great. Which in our email should be at the bottom of this page as well. It's wlc at csumb.edu. There it is. Ryan is saying in the YouTube comments, I'm looking at my academic requirements in the CMS. It says I'm still in need of the language requirement with the red box. I'm a transfer student with over 70 credits coming in. I remember hearing in one of the other videos, if you're coming in with a certain amount of credits, you don't need to take the language requirement. Did I just mishear this or do I actually still need to do it? Great question. Okay, so I'll share again. So we're still on the language. Sure. Oh, I'm not sharing. I have to click share. <laughs> We're still on the language requirement page. So, in order to be exempt from the language requirement, you have to be a transfer student who's either completed all of their general education or transferred with 70 units and, well, in either case, they have to be in a major that is language exempt. That is, that's considered a high unit major. So, you'll, if you, you have to make sure that your major is one of those high unit majors that you're coming in with. And if you are one of those high unit majors, and if you have come in completely GE complete, um, and, or with more than 60 units, then yes, you are exempt. But if you're, if you're not in a high unit major, then you're not exempt. And these are the- Really, it's all about what major you are, Ryan. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. If uh, the people watching the stream want to get in a last question, um, throw it up on the YouTube comments, or you can join the live chat, and the link is in the description box for the YouTube video, and it's also the top comment. Um, while we're waiting to see if there's any last-minute questions, anything else you ladies want to go over? No, we covered, um, covered what we wanted to cover today. I'm glad we got a lot of good questions. Okay, uh, then I'm going to share my screen. and uh, show you guys a little preview of what's coming up here. Okay, so starting today, um, students will be able to begin putting courses into your enrollment shopping cart and uh, you can put as many courses in there as you want. You can add or drop courses, you're not actually registering until um, after your orientation and the dates are right here on the website. One thing I want to point out that um, 
someone brought up today was that it says you begin registering. So if you're a transfer student and you come to orientation, you begin registering on Tuesday, June 21st. There will be some transfer students that register on the 22nd. So uh, begin is kind of the key word there. It's not a guarantee that everyone's going to register on the 21st. Um, but if you're a transfer student and you came to orientation, you're still going to register before the freshmen. Uh, they don't start registering until June 23rd. So that's a small clarification there. Um, our checklists have been downloaded by, you know, several hundred students. They seem to be helping uh, everyone out there. It gives you a really good, clear pathway of what you need to do to get ready to register for classes. We have open labs starting tomorrow. And these are optional workshops. You can come to campus, uh, sit down with some other students and get some group advising. We do ask that you RSVP for that. And I really want to stress that it's optional. Um, especially if you are think if you live really far away, I don't want to put pressure on you that you need to come and, and you're going to get you know a one on one appointment with an advisor or something like that. This is something for students that have already put courses in their shopping cart and they just want to sit down and maybe review it, talk about maybe some some holds they have or some specific situations. So that's an option. And finally, we're having call in hours every day until the end of next week, and that's usually either in the first or the second half of the day. All the dates are on this website, and we've got a lot of calls the last couple days. So if you have those quick questions, quick answers, um, give us a call at this number. Tomorrow is June 3rd, so tomorrow's call-in hours. Oh, shoot, I missed both. I think we're just doing open labs tomorrow. I think today yeah. was our last day. Yeah, we're just, we're just doing open labs tomorrow. My apologies. Um, you can still call our office at any time. Uh, a lot of times we'll try to schedule an appointment with an advisor for you, uh, but the open labs are still a really good resource and we're gonna keep doing the live streams every day and taking questions this way. Okay, a um, couple more questions and then we will wrap it up. Okay, Nikki is in the live chat and she is saying, another question, sorry, don't be sorry Nikki, you can ask as many as you want. <laughs> For pre-calculus, there's an option for 50-minute classes instead of two-and-a-half-hour classes, but they're only worth one credit. What would you recommend taking, the full class for four credits or the other one for only one credit? Love it. You, you actually have to – those are components of each other, Nikki. Yeah. So, you, so you actually are required to take both of them. One, the one unit one is a discussion section of the, of the lecture section. So the lecture, the two-and-a-half-hour long one that you meet for twice a week is the lecture component. Then the 50 minute one is a discussion. So they're both are gonna be required for you to sign up for. When you're, um, when we show you in um, CMS how to, or how to add classes on the live streams that we're gonna be hosting in the next week, uh, we'll be going through, you know, adding those kinds of classes to your shopping cart. Because when you go to add them in your shopping cart, it's gonna ask you what section of discussion you wanna add. So it's gonna basically force you to enroll in one of those discussions when you are going to enroll in pre-calculus uh, and CMS. So you got to take them both, Nikki. Good yeah. news. We, we don't have to choose. You have to take them both. Pre-calculus <laughs> is a five-unit total class. So one, four units for lecture, one unit for discussion. Okay. Um, both Diane and Janae have a similar question, which is when are we going to show how to add classes to shopping carts? Uh, we're going to show those starting tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., I think, right? That's the live stream? Yes, I believe so. And then they repeat it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Different advisors. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Check the YouTube one more time. Cool. Nothing new on there. Okay. I think we are good to go. Um, look out for an email for regarding permission numbers uh, for the students coming to Open Lab tomorrow. We will see you then. And for everyone else, we'll see you at the live stream tomorrow morning. And we'll show you kind of the final step, which is how to actually throw courses in the shopping cart and get yourself ready to go. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you.